Welcome to Wall Street Sizing Up. We are glad that you're here. Today, I do have one stock that I think uh, can run, has a lot more upside, but I answer the question that I've gotten two or three emails on, and that is, who are you and what's your background? And uh, essentially, what's up? So, my name is Mark. I, uh, if, you know, I started the channel as more of a passion project where I kind of walk myself through. It's, it's kind of what I do when I look at high conviction buys. I, I learned a long time ago that we need, need to look at the smart money and, um, that's what I've done. And so I kind of, it's the thoughts that I have to walk myself. Should I invest in this stock? Is there a pump? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. My background is, and some of you may have seen this or learned this or thought that I was just nervous, whatever it is. But my background is that I stutter. Yes, I stutter. So I've stuttered my entire life since birth, middle school, grade school, high school. High school got better. I got into athletics. Uh, I excelled. Um, I would say at a high level until I. Tore both knees, uh, both of my ACLs I blew out, uh, had surgery on one, uh, blew it out, then um, a year after high school blew the second one out. So but anyway, um, was a really good athlete, uh, so at the time I was very strong, I, you know, I was one of the better athletes, you know, and I just gained confidence in that and who I was and some of the social circles that I ran in and um, really enjoyed my high school. And then after high school, I was on the TCU, a pretty good private school. I was sheltered there. But uh, but yeah, my, so my stirring has always stuck around. So this project, it's a passion project and hopefully it'll be something more. We'll see. Um, but uh yeah, it's a it's it's a big deal for me because I do stutter. I still stutter. Um, I want to talk to you about really the strategies that I employ um, on on this channel. Um, I don't think my strategies are for everyone, and in fact, I think that everyone should find their own strategies and what works for them. Clearly, I don't want to day trade. Right? I started an e-trade account back in the early aughts, right? I used to trade that. Um, I wouldn't trade it every day. I'd, it was more of a swing trade. I, I didn't even know what swing trading was back then, but I would swing trade. It's more of a short-term investing, if, if you would as well. <clears throat> but I'm a, a big believer in knowledge. Knowledge is power, and so... Information is power. you don't have the information, one cannot seize power. It just dawned on me that, you know, back then there wasn't a lot of hedge funds, but clearly Wall Street knew more than I did. Now, back then, um, I had no idea about 13D and 13G filings, but I didn't know what, uh, what hedge funds were and what large investment firms were. And um, you could kind of see some of the business the positions that they would take through CNBC, and I would watch that <clears throat> but when I could. But after college, I got into tech, and um, that's why I mostly invest in tech and biotech. And, um, and then um, through my tech ex experiences, I, um, I opened up a, a tech a forensics firm for a couple years. Then I got into restaurants, and uh, I've had two exits in two different restaurant chains. And so that's been really good. And now I've worked in e-commerce now for oh, seven years, uh, really with uh, with my now wife. Um, uh, if you want to look at that, our, our D to C side is katydid.com if you want to look that up. But anyway, that being said, I do stutter. A lot of people stutter. Um, in fact, Joe Joe Biden stutters. In fact, I've heard a lot about you know Joe Biden's got gaffes, and I watch him, and yeah, I think he I think his age may be taking a toll, right? But I think some of the gaffes he has are actually blocks, or they're words that, or they're answers 
that he's going to have to give that he knows that he's probably going to block in that first or second or third word, right? And so what Joe Biden does is the same thing that I do on this channel, and that is substitute. So when you're thinking of the next word to say, I'm thinking five words ahead, right? Because I know that if I block, it might be for two or three seconds. So clearly, my speech is sometimes broken. Yeah, I, th I think you see that with uh, with Joe Biden. Joe Biden and I are not alone. There's been a lot of celebrities that stutter. Tiger Woods, Elvis Presley, that's why he, he began to sing. Marilyn Monroe, Samuel Jackson, Bruce Willis, e Emily Blunt. A lot of people get into acting and singing because of that. <clears throat> because when you act, you can kind of take on a new pers persona. This is going to sound kind of strange, but you can take on a new persona and uh, really, you're acting as another person, clearly, but you get into that person so much that, that, the, that you forget about the stuttering and another part of your mind takes over. Don't ask me to explain that. I, I just know that's a thing in the stuttering community. He developed a severe stutter. People would come to the house and there'd be introductions made and I couldn't introduce myself. It was that so, bad? Yeah. How'd I get into this? Why'd I get into this? Clearly, I traded stocks after college um, through my uh, my engineering days and tech, and that's that's kind of why I, I know a lot about you know the the protocols and the processes, the supply chain, the contracts, the um, just the 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 code, the tech that goes in to a lot of these companies and what they have to do and the hardware. Right, I would listen to Planet Money. I listened to a guy named Seth Williams on RE Tipster. I got into real estate a little bit, so that's the real estate tipster. Um, and then it just kind of dawned, dawned on me one day that you know it'd be very cathartic for me to do my own channel because I do stutter, right? And how great would that be? And how great would it be is if other stutterers could watch that and know that I talk about it and that I stutter and that I still have a, a problem. Now, again, confidence has helped me uh, as well as some, uh, or a pharmaceutical that I found probably in 2003 that kind of slows, doesn't slow my thoughts down, it just slows my speech down. And, uh, and so, you know, if I don't want to stutter, I can talk like this all day and it'd be hell of a boring life, but I'm just gonna be me. Just like, I want you to be you. So, with that said, that is my background. Now, the strategies that I, that I employ on this channel are ones that I've been doing for a very, very long time. That is, one, most of the money that I've made in my life, that I've saved, that is with a wealth manager. That is investing. Two, on this channel... I, I essentially swing trade. It's a very long-term swing swing trade. It might be a, a little bit investing. That's not in my Robinhood account. Clearly, I'm not going to show everybody what my um, trading accounts look like, right? I started with Thinkorswim. I got into Robinhood. It's very easy to use. It's very user-friendly. You can do it on your phone. It's all great. And I, and I know a lot of new people have gotten into I think they've added like 13 million accounts since the season of COVID started right uh, so with that said that's the strategy to follow the smart money you know I, I figured out just, just just like I said a long time ago now that we truly know about hedge funds and what they do through 13d and 13g filings and the high conviction buys that they make look man every hedge fund is a long short multi-strat macro sh hedge fund for the most part, long and short, right? For the most part, when we look at the strategy that we use as far as a swing trade or uh, just short of investing, clearly hedge funds are not smarter than me. They're not smarter than you, right? Let me tell you what hedge funds are, right? Knowledge is power, but your net worth is your net work, right? And I've kind of lived by that. Hedge funds are made.
to go 24 by 7, 365, right? And their one mission in life is to make it, well, is to produce outside returns for their investors, period. That's it. That's what they do all day long. So clearly, I don't day trade. I don't have the time to day trade. I barely have the time to swing trade and then make videos too. My point is, is that 90% of day traders fail. The 10% do extremely well because they've learned the risk management. They've learned position sizing. They've learned the things that you need to do. But know this, if you're going to go into day trading, and some of you might, and that's awesome, let me tell you, it's extremely lonely. I tried it for about a month, right? You know, and I understand the setups, and I understand the TA and the technical analysis, and you just, you know, I understand the gap ups. I understand, you know, you know how, how these guys do it, and I understand how they make the money, and that, that is through actually sizing up just like hedge funds do, right? But it's a, a day trader is lonely. It's a lonely profession, and your eyes will begin to bleed because all you do is look at stock charts all day long and support levels. And if it breaks that, it's going to run to the upside. Or it breaks that, it may run to the downside. And there's long, there's shorts, and um, you know it, it's a it's a full time job. And that's great if that's what you want to do. I have no problem with that, right? But to me, I don't have that kind of time. You know, I've got e-commerce company uh you know i'm trying to make some videos to help some people out um and then i've got real estate on, on the side um and then you know i've had my first child just three years ago right and so i want to spend some time with him that being said so jumped on here the strategy again follow the smart money through 13d and 13g filings high conviction buys that's taking 5% position or more in a company, right? Again, these guys are not smarter than us. They just know more. That's what I like to call on the channel LinkedIn Lions. LinkedIn Phenomena, right? That's what they are. They know a guy on the street. I had a friend that worked at Point Seventy Two, probably the best hedge fund maybe in America, right? That guy, he ran, I want to say he ran about $250 million at Point Seventy Two. Right, long, short, multi-strat. Right, I think he concentrated on energy. The point was, though, is that at any time, their back office could get any CEO on the phone at within 20 minutes. 20 minutes, they could have a CEO on the phone and be talking with them. Right, that's how powerful these hedge funds have become. So clearly, if they can get any CEO in the world on the phone within 20 minutes. They're going to know more than me and you. They're not smarter than me and you. They're, they're just more well-connected, period. So let's use that to our advantage, and that's what I try to do on the channel to not only help myself, but to help you. So with that being said, uh, you know, I just I love doing this. I love sharing this with you guys. I'm basically just walking you through my thoughts on a stock that a hedge fund's taking a high conviction buy-in. That's what this channel is, right? And it's become fun to me. Uh, it's become cathartic with my stuttering. Um, you know, it's it helps me with, with that. And that's great, and I find that extremely exciting. But I also find the, the you know, betting on stocks extremely exciting. Investing in stocks, extremely exciting. I just... Um, I'm in a good place in my life. Uh, you know, I've got a, a little money behind me now, and uh, heck, I, I I've even got in. You know, back in the day, 2012, I got into what's BTC, commonly known as Bitcoin, and uh, I, I remain in some crypto positions. Not a lot, but you know, that's that's fun. So, uh, do I like to trade? I love to trade. I just don't have time to trade. All the time so the tr swing trade and walking myself through uh, why I would why I believe a hedge fund might still be in this stock still have a, a position open 
or are they out? And so uh, I, I hope that you find value in that like I do. Uh, I am in a good place. And with that, I'm just glad that you're on this journey with me. I'm excited. I hope that you're excited. I hope that I can bring the value to your portfolio that I have brought to mine. Uh, and with that, let's get to our one stock of the day. Yes, SPPI. As we get into this, it is Spectrum Pharmaceuticals. Spectrum, which engages in the acquisition, development, and commercialization pipeline of late stage clinical and commercial products. Doing God's work. You reject Satan and all his evils? Sure. Penny stock, what we like to say on the channel, a budget stock, $450 million market cap, which trades almost 8 million shares a day. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. So we like to see all on the channel. Now, who jumped into that? That would be this man here. One Stephen Bowie of our Mestis Capital. I'll tell you what they are. Long, short, of course. Value-oriented, event-driven hedge fund. Focused primarily on healthcare and consumer sectors. We've mentioned them on the channel before. They take high conviction positions, I would say four or five times a month. So they know what they're doing. So let's expand out here to the monthly. What's about to get interesting here is this right here. Clearly that is a Batman type, phallic type, strippers and cocaine party going on right there. Look at that pump. Bam. But here's the thing. You would think that our message would have got in on the 24th, especially being a Friday, or the 23rd. Nope. They got in after this big pump. So after this big pump on July 30th right here. And what you see afterwards is this clean and easy pump over the next four days. I think it's a 10% pump. It's like a like one of those turbo boost Capri Sun sweet sugar hitters. Pop! Right about here and then it breaks into a plank. More of a consolidation. More of a little coiled up snake because I think it breaks to the upside. I do think that our missus took some chips off the table. Again, it was only a 10% pump. So I think that they're still in this trade. I think in the next couple of days is going to make or break them. Uh, maybe today might have broke them. What is the day chart? As it is down sharply, I believe. Let's see what. That's uh, yeah, down 3% today. I don't know. He can still be in this again with not all his chips. But uh, if this breaks up, I think he'll ride it up a little bit more. And but if it breaks down again, he'll probably pull his chips and uh, take his toys and go home. If you know what I mean. That said, here's what he put in. This is the high conviction in SPPI. He went 7.8 million shares that he bought. He'd been in the stock before, but not since 2018. So this is a, a all new buy. He went in for almost six percent of the entire company. So it was a high conviction buy. That being said, he also got into RMED, so SPPI and RMED, which did about the same thing. There was a pump and he got in after the pump, I believe. Do your own research there. We appreciate you guys. I appreciate you listening to my story. I hope you're as excited as I am about this channel, about following the smart money. But again, watch your six and go hard in the paint. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hit the like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.